Hey YouTubers, uh, thanks for joining in. Here's another insightful walk around from Snowtrox World Headquarters. Uh, of course, uh, many of you, almost 50,000 of you, have viewed uh, our last walk around that we did on the MXZ Blizzard G5 850. And today we've got kind of a cool treat. We're going to do the Renegade G5 850 with Smart Shocks and do a, a walk around. So I hope that. Uh, I'll be able to expose you to some interesting information you might otherwise uh, not have been exposed to. So let's talk about the G5. First of all, we got to get this straight. This is a trail snowmobile, like that's a trail snowmobile. This is a 137 by 125, 15 wide. Skidoo puts this in on their website in the trail sled category. It is, that's the way it is. If you want to go to crossover, which is what we used to think these were, now you go to a 146 backcountry and backcountry X. That's a whole nother sequence of, uh, of sleds. So the other thing that we got to talk about is, is kind of the bad news. Uh, first of all, you can't buy one of these. These are sold out. These were all sold out on spring break. And so uh, G5 XRSs with smart shocks are not in stock at dealers unless somebody's been playing hocus pocus with the, uh, with the uh, spring check deal. But having said that, we want to talk about this sled because I know you're interested in it and there may be a lot of you who are interested in spring breaking one for next year. Plus this does apply a lot. We're going to talk about applies to other Renegades and there are Renegades that are in season that you may be able to find at a dealer. So let's talk a bit about uh, what this is all about. First of all, it's a G5. So it's different body work all the way around it's different body work than a G4. Uh, how do you like it? It's in our last uh, walk around on the blizzard, um, we had quite a bit of feedback that most people seem to like the look of it. And I use the word organic because that's kind of the, lo the look it has. It's a far less uh, angular and softer curved kind of body work. I, I like it, I think it's very appealing. It has some interesting, uh, some interesting nuances to it and uh, not the least of which is this ginormous front trunk and you can pack a lot of goodies in there as we said uh, last time a cache of pemmican and anything else you need and this hood has the all-new 10.2 inch uh, screen and this thing honestly this is like going to the movies when you're riding a snowmobile. I'm going to let you see it. I'm going to do a run up with this and I'll do a run up later. Check this out. This is excessively huge. And uh, I don't think you're going to get anybody who's going to get a bigger one in the future. This is obviously a response to the uh, S7 that Polaris put out. And uh, there you go. How do you like that? And there is a plethora of settings, adjustments, you name it, that you can do on the left and the right side of the screen. You can toggle from this switch cluster. And I just want to make mention of this. This switch cluster is not the same, although it is similar to the new switch cluster that was on the MXZ Blizzard G5. But this is another completely unique unit. And a good friend of mine, his name is Roger Skym, told me one day in Yellowstone when we were riding, he said that those switch clusters on the left side in tooling costs are usually worth between three hundred thousand and half a million dollars for the tooling and skidoo they uh, they implement them and bring them in and throw them out with great regularity i do have to say and i have to take back it's not very often well i was wrong once when i thought i was wrong but it actually turned out i was right i said on our last walk around i said that i liked the new blizzard switch cluster but I see that this one uh, suffers from the same problem. And the more I rode that, the more I realized that I don't like it as much as the old cluster. And that's because the start, stop, and reverse button has been made obscure here. It's a little tiny button. It's not colored, it should be red. I'm gonna put my finger on it right there. It is a tiny little button. And when you're using it with gloves on, it's hard to, uh, from a tactile standpoint, it's hard to, uh, to get a feel for it. I mean, quite honestly, that's the problem. So um, in as much as this isn't a horrible thing, it's not a step ahead. The old one had great big switches on it, and I really like that. 
So uh, we'll go back to the body work. The body work on this side, and I'm not going to take it off because I did it on the blizzard, but this is a very sophisticated cooling ductwork system that works with a fan on the, uh, on the jack shaft on the secondary, and it actually sucks air in through these frog skins and exhausts air and cools the belt. Really an effective system and the kind of thing that we've needed for a long time with 100 and 65 horsepower, 180 horsepower snowmobiles. Great idea. It's all integrated. Doesn't spoil the looks of the sled in any way, shape, or form. Okay, uh, how do you like the flat uh, gray finish? No gloss. It's kind of neat. By the way, don't try and wax it or it'll turn all white and look terrible. Okay, so you've got the longer tunnel than the blizzard we did two weeks ago. You've got a 137 inch track in it. A big part of this sled is the Smart Shock package, but before I talk about that, I just want to review very quickly. So, this is the long tunnel version for the R Motion X. R Motion X happens on Renegade and it happens on uh, all your Blizzard models or MXZ models specifically. So, what it, uh, what it relates to is, is being able to adjust the front torque arm angle. Remember what we talked about? This bolt here is where the power enters the chassis. When you whack the throttle, everything happens on that shaft to push the chassis forward. And the push comes from the between the rails where that front torque arm mounts. That tor front torque arm now has an eccentric bolt. You can rotate it, move the torque arm uh, up or down. If you move the torque arm up, which is the way it comes from the factory, the sled will not be very wheelie friendly. So transfer remains with the skis on the ground. It still transfers, but it doesn't like to lift the front end. If you turn the eccentric bolt on both sides down, then what will happen is, is the torque arm will have more of an uphill angle to it, to that bolt. And when you gas it, it will push up on that bolt and lift the skis. And you'll get lots of fun wheelies. You'll get lots of transfer on takeoff. But you will pay the price for it when you are in twisty terrain. It will one ski or lift the inside ski more. But, you know, the, you can adjust it to, to your preference, to how you're going to ride. So a lot of people are like, come on, that is like a, a tiny little movement. Yes, it is. But I'm here to tell you that tiny little movement makes a huge, huge difference in the chassis. Skidoo's not fooling around with that. That is a really trick uh, idea. It, it's the kind of thing that a, a real high performance motorcycle or a high performance car, the kind of adjustment incrementally speaking uh, on those kind of vehicles can make a huge difference. These are, these are hugely sophisticated vehicles, these snowmobiles, and that is a cool feature. If you haven't used it, it's on all of the uh, X, uh, R Motion X models, so there's G4s running around that have that. If you haven't ever fiddled with it, I would suggest you try it and see what you think. If you haven't touched it since you got the sled, it's set in the flat setting to keep the nose down. So you can move it up and you'll see how to do it when you loosen the, uh, the jam bolt on it and, uh, and rotate the, uh, the eccentric bolt. So that, that covers the uh, weight transfer characteristics. Now we want to talk about smart shocks. So smart shocks are, by uh, Skidoo's own admission, are uh, semi-active. They are not fully active. They are semi-active. And what that means is, is there's not a LIDAR or a radar beam going out in front of the snowmobile to actually read the terrain. The snowmobile is reading the terrain from right there. It looks like a sway bar hookup. It's not a sway bar hookup inside. Let me see, I make sure I'm pointing at the right spot. I don't know whether you can get the camera in there. There's a little arm that looks like a, 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 a sway bar. This is the sway bar down here. There's a little arm that looks like a sway bar and it causes the, this shock and the other front shock to react and send messages to the front arm and to the rear arm. Now this is like, this is really cool stuff. This thing, if it was just all fluff and it didn't work, it, it wouldn't be so cool. But this is amazing how well it works. So you're heading down your favorite trail with your buds and you got the hammer down a bit and all of a sudden you see a moon crater up ahead. And instead of grabbing a handful of brake, which you will do the first time you see it because you won't believe that it works this good, but the second time you go through it, you'll go through it 
and you won't even worry about what you're hitting because when those ski shocks hit that moon crater, they're gonna say, guys, back there in the skid, wake up, there's a bad one coming. And they're sending that bump and it's damping, uh, the damping characteristics that the vehicle uh, basically determines based on speed, um, throttle position, a whole lot of parameters. And it stiffens up the front arm right away and it stiffens up the rear arm so that you can go through that moon crater and you're laughing, it, it completely reacts to it. Now, there are, there are limitations. You can't drive off a cliff. I mean, there are limitations to it, but the, limita the, the, the area where it becomes limited is way further ahead than we've ever had before on a snowmobile. This is, this is groundbreaking stuff. So it's semi-active because it actually has to swallow the bump with the front end first before it can make the appropriate adjustments. Now, once you move into whoop terrain and the front end is doing one of these things, it's gonna stiffen up the front suspension as well and have all four shocks in, in the, the whole program. These shocks on the rear have little, uh, uh, little reader things on them as well and they're contributing data to the, uh, the ECU. It's a separate ECU for the smart shocks and they're communicating, the fronts are both communicating, so there's a lot of electronic whiz bang going on here, like a lot. Um, so I know there'll be a bunch of you, because I read all your stuff on the site, that'll say, yeah, you know, that'll just be expensive to fix five years from now. Probably, but if you're buying one of these, you're probably not gonna worry about it five years from now. And it's a KYB system, and KYB makes really good stuff, and uh, very reliable, very high tech, um, and. Uh, durable stuff and I mean I, I can't legitimately tell you that this this stuff isn't going to give you trouble in the long run because it's only been around for a year so far um, so you know I, I think that if you're one of the uh, uh, early adopters of this kind of technology then you're prepared to take those risks with it I can tell you this if you get a chance to ride one and you're a skidoo nut and you, you, you're interested in it, don't turn down the opportunity to take it for a spin because the first time I rode it, I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this. And, you know, take it in some bumps because that's where you really appreciate it. So that's what smart shocks are, semi-active suspension. No radar beam out the front like some of the automotive stuff is that reads potholes before the front wheels even get there. This reads the terrain with the front end and it, to a certain degree, it reads it with the back end, but more uh, appropriately, the back end is responding to what the front arm or what the front end is saying to it. So that's your uh, that's your smart shock deal. I think I think I covered that pretty good. I hope I did. And if not, ask me questions uh, on the feedback on our page. Okay, so this has got an adjustable riser, like uh, like an XRS MXZ would, and uh, the riser. In, in my opinion, honestly, that shouldn't be optional. You, you should just get one at your dealer and put it on the sled before you bring it home. It is a great riser and it's versatile. Gives you the, the benefit if you're on a big cruise or on a big tour, you're running a long lake or something, you can put the handlebars back. If you're in real bad whoops and bumps, you can put them forward and stand up. It's, it, th this is a class uh, piece of work, this thing, ever since it came out. I think it came out with the original 2017 G4, but it might have even been around before that. In any case, it's a great, uh, it's a great, you can buy it as an accessory or you, you, obviously it comes with the XRX, XRS packages. Skis on this are Pilot uh, S. They're not the tunables. A lot of guys like these better. Um, the tunables have a lot of advantages, but they are heavy. And so if you're sensitive to weight, you may not want them. These are another iteration of the Pilot series of skis. Skidoo just keeps loading them up and lining them up with more and more different variants of their skis. The good news is carbides work on virtually all of them. They're the same carbides, which is good news. Um, these skis are really uh, a result of the, the new uh, RAS X front end. The X front end is wider Therefore, it has more travel mathematically because where it pivots from the inside is the exact same spot. So if you go out to the ends and you move the suspension, you're going to have more travel. More importantly than that, when you run with the torque arm in the flat position, holding the nose down, uh, I, I, I'll be careful how I say this, 
but there isn't quite as much side-to-side -side weight transfer. Snowmobile handling is in a very large way is related to going into the corner, backing out of the throttle, and then starting to pivot, and the vehicle tilts onto, let's say you're turning left, it tilts onto its right side, and there's weight transfer onto the right front ski, and that's where your, your initial bite comes from. That's where the confidence to turn in and go harder comes from. If that first 15 degrees of handlebar movement is satisfying and it's not understeer or push, then you're gonna turn it further and you're gonna give it more throttle. When you put this in the, the torque arm position so it's on an angle, so it's pushing the nose up, it transfers more. It will come up on the inside more, but if you're an active rider, you'll be able to control that. So here's what I'm saying. This ski is designed to work with the X front end. It has a deeper keel because when you run it flat, it tends to corner flat, and then there's a hint of understeer. That's understeer is push. Understeer is when, is when you hit the wall with the front of the snowmobile. Uh, oversteer is when you hit it with the back. That's a NASCAR thing. Anyway, um, that's, that's the deal with the skis. If you get the, uh, the, the tunable ski and you opt for that, or you put it on as an accessory, there's a whole other story, and we're not gonna get into that because we've got lots to talk about on this. Okay, so let's pick it up here at the front of the sled and talk about the motor. This is a Rotax 850 E-Tech uh, with boost injectors. This is a highly sophisticated motor, super good on fuel, fast. This is a hot rod snowmobile. This is not a slow sled. This is a really quick snowmobile with lots of power. It's the same exact engine package that's in the MXZ Blizzard, which is a lot less money than this baby here. But just so you know, it is exactly the same power plant. There's no different. The clutches are the same. The clutching would be the same. 137 may have a little different uh, bottom tooth in the chain case, and I, I don't know that for sure, but you can find out. Okay, so this engine... Uh, with boost injectors puts out an arguable 165 horsepower they both do and uh, yeah that's where you want to be you want to be at that kind of speed so let's talk a bit about the uh, headlight the headlight is an LED on the 850 XRS it is not available on other certain models it's kind of weird the way they've done this the 10.2 inch screen is only available on XRS and I think it's only available on the 850. You can get the, uh, sorry, you can get the screen, the 10.2 inch screen on the 900R turbo, but I don't believe you can get the LED headlight on that. It's kind of confusing. I, I was trying to, I was reading, reading up on it. I was trying to figure out, you know, what's this all about? Okay, so um, let's move down and talk about the track underneath this. 137 inches, we said. It's a 15 wide and it has a 125 lug uh, is, is what you would get standard. This has a 1.50 ice ripper. You can get a 125 without ice ripper. You can get a 125 with and you can get a 1.5 with. So here's my advice to you uh, based on years of experience and crazy silly things happening. Go for the ice ripper every time. It is not as good as traction studs, so you don't need to, to yell at me or send me mean emails. Traction studs are the best, but this can make the difference between sliding sideways on an icy road or an icy trail and ending up on your roof racks um, and not. The, there is a definite improvement in real uh, icy conditions and the track is worth every cent. If you're going to put traction studs in and you go the 125, well then you, you don't need this. But if you're not going to put traction studs in or you do want the maximum traction you can get, you're going to want an ice ripper. It's a, it's a great idea. It's, it's, a, it's about time for it. Okay, so I talked to you a bit on the MXZ last week. You can see on the MXZ there's only one set of link connectors on the back of the tunnel because this is the long tunnel version, the 137 and it's got four uh, hookups for link. That sled only has two hookups for link. All right, now the tunnel, I just wanna talk about it. You've got bigger vents in the floorboards to evacuate snow. The floorboards are a little flatter with the G5 by the jack shaft and the chain case, um, and that's a good thing. This tunnel is the only one of its kind in the industry that Skidoo uses on, on the G4. They pioneered it and it's back on the G5. It's a sandwich. There is no cooler strips in the tunnel. 
the tunnel is, is uh, aluminum on the bottom, aluminum on the top, and then bonded together. Coolant comes back to the back and goes back to the front. And what it does is, is it saves weight. And I told you on the Blizzard, that is true. It is a lighter design because you don't have these extruded aluminum uh, coolers. You, you just use what's there. It, there. There's double the sandwich of aluminum, but it's, it's super lightweight. The only risky thing about it is, and it's to guys who are gonna put traction studs in, make sure you do them up tight and lock tight them because if you throw a stud, it's, it's not easy, but I've talked to too many people who have penetrated the aluminum, okay, on the, underneath on the inside of the tunnel and poked a hole in it and then got themselves in a jackpot because it's darn near impossible to weld it when it's got a hole poked in it. So make sure if you're using traction studs that they're done up tight. You can throw a stud into uh, a strip aluminum uh, cooler. You can throw a stud into them. In fact, you can drive a bus over them and nothing will happen. So there is a little bit of a vulnerability there. It is not a big deal. I wouldn't not buy the snowmobile because of that. Just uh, make sure that you understand that. So uh, you don't get yourself in a problem. You okay, so you got a first class uh, drive axle brake on here. It's a Brembo setup. That's not inconsequential. That's a class piece of equipment. Same thing with the master cylinder. It's Brembo. This is a, a drive axle brake, so inherently it is dealing with less rotational uh, torque on the drive axle. It's dealing with, with less speed, and so what generally tends to happen is you get less feel or less modulation. These guys at Skidoo have done a great job. I think they've messed around with the pad material and got maybe a little bit softer pad, uh, brake pad material because there is decent depth of modulation. There is decent brake feel with this drive axle brake. You know, for years we've talked about it in Super Trex Magazine, how we really prefer uh, jack shaft brakes. And I still feel that way, but this has come a long way and it works, uh, it works quite effectively. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, I should go back to this, but I need to mention that the front end is wider on this and it's wider uh, because of the X designation and the spindles are new. The spindles are, are different than the G4 uh, before the X. The G4 that had X RAS has the same spindles, but originally in 2017, they were different spindles. So this is a little bit wider by almost an inch, I believe. Um, okay, we were talking about the back end. We were talking about the link accessory stuff. You know all about that. We've got the radio wave uh, tether, which is a super great working feature. Really, really nice stuff. Everything about this sled in terms of the technology is top drawer, well done, well made. Um, I think that it overall is a, is a class piece of equipment and it's a lot of fun to ride, but the real uh, talking point with this sled, hands down, running away, is the smart shocks. The smart shocks are really the cutting edge. I think they're the future. I think that more and more snowmobilers are gonna opt for that, especially big mileage guys, people who run uh, uh, cross country and run uh, like who go to uh, states with big trail mileage or provinces with big trail mileage and wanna do a week tour. That is the thing to have because it makes such a huge difference to the ride quality of the snowmobile. So I think uh, I've covered pretty much everything there is to cover. Um, if, uh, if you have any more comments or questions, please put them on the, uh, on the site where you respond. And would you do me a favor? Would you uh, like this and uh, subscribe at the bottom of the screen there? Click on that for us and we'd really appreciate it. So there you go, Skidoo's G5 850E Tech Renegade XRS covered in, uh, in Walk Around. Thanks a lot for watching.